OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Hi, everyone. So good to see you here on a Friday afternoon. Um, I have a lot to share, and I really want you to experience something. So I don't know if I'll be able to cover everything I had planned, but I hope so. My name is Christy Reyes. Um, I am um, from a non-credit ESL program at Miracosta College in uh, Oceanside, North San Diego County. And I also um, work with OTAN. So today, um, I want to talk about good instruction, because instruction comes first. Good teaching is always first. Technology is second. But um, this is my goal for this session. Uh, the objective is that hopefully by the end of this session, you will be able to think of some ways that you take your great classroom in person instruction activities and put them online and do those with your uh, students. We're going to look at different tools and different apps. Um, we won't be able to go in depth to all of them. I kind of want to give you a survey so that you can pick and choose what would work best with your students in your class. So uh, hopefully, I'm pretty sure that by the end of this session and our time together, you will have come up with one new tool, one new idea for teaching. Okay. So we're going to start up with, uh, start with warm up introductions. I want to just go over quickly about high quality face to face instruction versus online instruction. Are there differences? Um, I want to talk about some typical activities that we use in our adult ed classrooms and how I have tried to find ways to transform them for online use, whether it's um, synchronous in our Zoom class meetings or online um, through the LMS that we use at my school, Canvas. And then I want you to um, have time to reflect and give me feedback, of course. So um, before we go there, let me just go back for a moment. Um, please, please share in the chat that you have the same experience as I did, so I don't feel so bad. Back after March 13th, when our state closed down, um, and the following week, I had one week to prepare for synchronous online teaching. And that first week, I was exhausted after that first week. How about you? First week of remote instruction, were you absolutely exhausted? Can you type yes or no? Hopefully you felt like I did. Hopefully I'm not alone. Uh huh. So I see um, a lot of you saying yes. And what I noticed, because I do record my Zoom class meetings and put them um, in our LMS so that students who are absent, they can review and go back. Um, and I took a peek at those and it has a transcript. And guess who was talking all the time? Me. <laughs> I was the only one talking because I guess I was so nervous and trying to figure out how to do this that I just took control when really you know that in adult ed we need to give some of the control or at least give um, our adult students autonomy and choices more. That's what good instruction is for adult ed. So I'm sorry if you type something in the in the chat. Um, I may miss it, but Pat is going to um, let me know if there are questions. But go ahead, please have a back chat there. And anytime you see something that um, sparks some idea for you, please share it. It's not I'm not the expert. I'm not the only one here. You all have great um, activities, I'm sure. So does everybody know how to use um, the annotate in Zoom? On the bottom of your screen, it's usually at the bottom anyway, you have a, um, these tools like what you see here, um, new share, pause, share, annotate. So when you click on that pencil, um, a new toolbar will um, appear like the one you see at the bottom. And um, you can choose stamp, you can draw or enter text. Can you just choose stamp? And in a moment, I'd like you to um, use that annotation tool. In just a second. Okay. Uh, Christy, this is Mimi. We don't see that toolbar um, separate. We have to go to view options. Um, okay, thank you. Thank we'll you for that. Your screen, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so there. go to view options then. Yeah, your setup might look a little bit different than mine. Yes. So if you can find the annotation tool, great. If you don't, um, that's okay. All right. So um, what I'd like you to do, I'm going to show the next slide. And I want you to use the annotation tool to circle stamp or uh, 
use text to put your name next to the image that shows your current mood. Then if you can share in the chat um, what you teach, or if you're an administrator, that's great too. Or if you're um, a technology coach, please let us know that. And if you answer this question, if you were to visit a physical on-ground in-person face-to-face classroom at your school and you thought, wow, that's great instruction, what would be some of the activities? What would be some of the things you see that would signal to you that is good teaching right there, okay? So I'm gonna advance the slide and go ahead and use the annotation tool and mark your current mood. And then, as I said, in the chat, type in classes you teach where as well, if you like, and what are some effective face-to-face -face classroom activities? Okay. Okay, everybody's feeling pretty groovy. Happy dancing, it's Friday. A lot of us are tired. And so thank you for attending on a Friday after probably a hard week work of teaching. Interaction, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is so much more work to be teaching online. You're, you're managing like three, four different things at once at least. Okay, we have a lot of ESL teachers. Thank you. Okay, so um, yeah. When, thank you. Um, when I walk by um, a classroom and the students just are looking down at their books and the teacher is sitting down at the front, maybe checking her Facebook account or something, um, I usually can tell that something's not right there, you know? Um, yeah, for especially for our ESL classes, um, <laughs> It's so sad when I get um, scheduled to be in a classroom, physical classroom next to the math teacher, because they're always so frustrated because we're noisy. We have to, we have to, that's the way we are. We have to speak loudly and clearly and have fun. Okay, some of you do tech training, citizenship. The students look joyful. They're enjoying their time there. Yes. Yes, and thank you. Um, Elaine, you're getting some instructions there. Um, so once you click on annotate the bottom bar, um, the second bar may appear at the top and that's where you can see annotate. So um, using the annotation, if you're using Zoom um, for your classes, you should um, look at some videos. You can just Google it and there are lots of um, videos and tutorials for using Zoom, because using the whiteboard and using the annotation tool could be very, um, very good for some activities that we traditionally do in the on ground classroom. Okay, so I'm going to give you about 10 more seconds. Only one person is really frustrated in the bottom left, only one of you. That's good. I'm happy to hear that. Oh, some of you are a little bit shy, like the doggy, and some of you are in a Zen state, like the top right corner. So this is a simple opening for my Zoom classes that I sometimes use. You know, not everybody arrives at the same time. And so sometimes I have some, you know, chit chat with students who arrive early. And other times I just don't feel like talking. <laughs> so um, I have them do something like this to respond in the chat or to annotate. So you can get this and other Zoom openers. I'm going to share at the end of this presentation the slideshow, and you can click all the links and everything. And um, one of the links I have on this slide is a link to this and other openers for Zoom classes. OK, so moving on, let me um, go ahead and clear the annotations. So yes, in the chat, I saw that you all, it's not wanting to advance for some reason. My slide's stuck. I'm gonna have to just exit out for one second there because my slide seemed to have gotten frozen. Okay, so I already talked about that. And um, so, I think you pointed out some great things that we can see in our face-to-face -face classroom um, instruction. So we need to do the same. We need to do the same. And how can we do that? Well, let's just look at what, um, what does the research say um, for high quality instruction? Well, you'd be probably not surprised that 
for face-to-face -face and online instruction, the same qualities indicate high level quality instruction. So for adult ed, we create the community. We're so good at that. We have active learning, engagement. The teacher is not the expert. I mean, I learn so much from my students. I bet you do too, because they come from all walks of life and had different you know, careers and so forth. So we're kind of just setting up the activities a lot of time. And we're um, more often trying to give the give the control over to the students. It's about them, it's not about us. So it's student-centered, we give students choices, we let students be autonomous, and really important, I'm sure you know, that um, our instruction has to be relevant to students' needs, goals, and their lives. They need to be able to use what they're learning in our classes outside of our classrooms. So we have to always remind them why we're teaching them something, because sometimes they may question themselves, and that's a lot of times uh, when they drop when they see this isn't really relevant to me, okay? So we need to do those predict predictable routines and keep those patterns that we used to have. It's just gonna look a little bit different in the online environment, but what are some examples? It may be in your face-to-face -face classroom. What are some routines and, and patterns that you have? Can you share on the chat? Okay, great. So you do an activity, the same activity such as a dictation every day. And I mean, while the element of surprise can be very effective, our students need that structure and routine. Okay, group activities and breakout rooms. Yes. Anything else? Give you about two more seconds in the chat. Routines and patterns. Morning greetings, question of the day, daily agenda, yes. Students want to walk in and see what they're gonna learn today. So it's a very good practice to start with an agenda and something I've, I've included now more often is the objective for the day. So um, what are you gonna be able to walk away from? And then at, when we come to the end of the class, I revisit that and I say, did we do this? Did you practice this? Oh, okay, so it's good you came to school today, right? Current events with pictures, excellent. So you said it, agenda and objectives. Um, some other routines, okay? So maybe um, on your last day of your class in the week, you gave homework, right? Well, online, you could send your class announcement, announcements on the same day same day, even same time. That could be a routine that could help students. So you mentioned something that student that you do every day, maybe when students come into your, your class, your online class, whether it's Zoom or whatever, there are activities to do right away. So they're not just waiting for the other students to get there, that there's something that they need to do. Um, consistently posting your assignment homework in the same place, if that's on a um, learning management system. I think in Los Angeles use Schoology, there's Google Classroom, um, some places use Canvas like at my school. And um, do you know what an exit ticket is? Can you type yes or no in the chat? Okay, I figure you do because we're, we're adult ed instructors and we're the best. We are the best. So yes, finish class with a debrief, maybe going back to the agenda, going back to the objectives, have an exit ticket. And something I, I confess I'm not very good at doing is having students reflect. So maybe they could write a sentence about, you know, um, what they still need help with and what they did well. So some reflection is important. Okay, the slides keep getting stuck for some reason. I think I jinxed myself. Okay, there we go. Um, so yes. Okay, there we go. Um, you know, uh, when students walk into my physical classroom, um, I have a PowerPoint slide projected with the agenda and the objectives. They have to sign in, they have to pick up you know, maybe a paper that I'm going to distribute. And um, they can see the clock for the sign-in time. And that's kind of hard to do, <laughs> all of that. So I want to show you classroom screen. I love it. It's free. You create an account if you want to save your screens. But what I do, my class is um, 8 o'clock in the morning. I go in a little bit early and I uh, before I open my Zoom room and I set this up. Um, classroom screen. You, um, hopefully you can see the little um, toolbox at the at the bottom. You can change the background. They have some very beautiful scenes. This is the one I used um, on Thursday. <laughs> so you or you can upload a 
a, an image for the background. You can um, put in videos. So what you do there is you just go to, um, let me see, media. And then you can put in the URL for a video. Let me just go to YouTube very quickly. Um, so we were reading about wonders of the world. So I put in a video of um, the ancient wonders of the world or something like that. So it's very simple to do this. That's not it. OK, just say, say this one. So I'm just going to copy that URL. And I'm going to stream go 85 plus live channels with no. I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to post in uh, paste in there the YouTube URL. And so I can I can have that so I can have this playing as they come in. Um, I can I always put a clock. And I always put a calendar. And I you can change the colors, you can move things around. So they come in and they see a lot of things going on, things that they can watch right away. They see, uh, OK, I have five minutes before class starts. They can run to the restroom one last time. All of that. There are many other tools down here, like random name. So if you're doing an activity and then you want students to answer and not the same student answering every time, you could put in their names and choose a random name. There, you know, a timer. I usually put the timer there as well. And so I set it to 15 and OK, we're going to take a break now. I'm going to start and there's a little sound so they know when to come back from the break. So that's the first tool I want to show you. Um, it can help you keep those routines going, those routines and patterns. OK, so we need to create that um, community that we do so well in the face to face on ground classroom. Active learning is what we do so well. Student to student and teacher to student interactions are things we do so well. So those are the first things that um, I want to talk about. So um, can you answer in the chat? If we were at your school, the school building, the site in your classroom, the one with the four walls, how do you usually help students to get to know to get to know each other and feel comfortable in the physical four walled classroom? What do you do? I, I probably can predict, but um, go ahead and type that out. Then if you can answer the second question, how do you do that in your synchronous online class or in your learning management system? How have you helped students get to know each other and feel comfortable in the online environment? So if you can answer those two, let me have a look at what you're typing. Yeah, that was called classroom screen. Thank you for people answering. Yes. Thank you, everybody who, um, those of you who are answering the questions for me. Breakout rooms. So I've asked my students, what's your favorite thing in the class? And the breakout rooms. Now, with beginners, you have to do a little more scaffolding and preparation, right? You can't just send them to a breakout room. Lineups. Yes. Um, some Google Slides where they introduce themselves to each other. Group work. Find someone who. There are so many of those uh, icebreaker things, right? Games, conversation, interviews and mingle, breakout groups. Yes. Jamboard. Yeah, we're going to look at that in just a second, hopefully. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Padlet. Oh, well, maybe you don't need this. <laughs> this presentation. Um, it seems like you're doing a lot of things I'm already going to talk about, so we can go faster over some of those. So thank you, everybody. I don't know why my slides don't want to advance very much. Um, one way we can um, have students be kind of active and make sure that they're participating in the online environment in the asynchronous or the synchronous classes is using, if you have Zoom, um, using the reactions button. So the latest version, which was rolled out, so you'll probably need to update if you don't see this. Um, at the bottom bar, you see the reactions, the little smiley face, and there are um, there are emojis for clapping, giving a thumbs up, a heart, laughing, surprise, and more. So I want you to look for that, look for the reactions. If you don't see it, go all the way to the right, to more and then you should see it there reactions it's like the second one down for me under chat when i go to more okay you're going to use that in just a moment can you give me a thumb up right now give me a thumb up 
Okay, thank you. I see you have located the reactions. Thumb up. Okay, so you probably know of this icebreaker. It could be really fun, something that you do in your class. And um, it's this one, two truths and one lie. Okay, so you could have students prepare some sentences about themselves. They could type it out. Of course, visual is always helpful for their classmates to know what they're saying. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to read three sentences about myself. The first time you're just going to listen. The second time when I read them one by one, I'll pause after each one and you're going to give me a thumb up for the sentences you think are true and a thumbs down for the sentence about me that is false. So this is modeling an icebreaker activity you could do in your online class, okay? So just listen first. Here's the first um, sentence. I have taught ESL in Southern California for more than 20 years. That can't be true. I'm only 25. <laughs> I have several pets two birds, three cats, one dog, and one horse even. I am fluent in Spanish and French. Yeah, I'm a language teacher. I gotta, I gotta know other languages. So I'm gonna read again, okay? You're going to give a thumb up if you think it's true, a thumb down if you think it's false. First one, I have taught ESL in Southern California for more than 20 years. Give me a thumb up or thumb down. Okay, Diana, Katrina, you already know me, so that's not even fair. Okay, um, next one, I have several pets, two birds, three cats, one dog, and even a horse. If you think that's true, give me a thumb up. Mimi thinks no. Yeah, I can't have that many animals, that's a zoo. Yeah, no, no. Okay, and the last one, if you think this is true, give me a thumb up. If you think it's false, give me a thumb down. I'm fluent in Spanish and French. Yeah, Katrina knows me really well. Actually, guys, no. <laughs> the last one is false. The last one is false. I've studied other languages, but um, ironically, being a language teacher, I never gained fluency in any other language besides English, and even that is questionable. So could you see yourself doing this with your students? It'd be a great way for them to get to know you and for you to get to know them and for them to get to know each other. So what are some other things we can do besides those creating community at the beginning, icebreakers and things to engage our students online? Um, what can we do that's equal to how we engage them in person? So can you share in the chat, how do you ensure, how do you make sure the students are engaging and participating in class? Sometimes you, they don't turn on their camera and all you see is their name and maybe you ask a question and you know, sometimes you, you get an answer or not. What, what are some things you do to make sure that they're paying attention and going along with your lesson? Can you type in the chat any strategies you use? And thank you for everybody um, helping out with questions in the chat. Interactive slides, yes. Okay. Oh yeah, wow, that's interesting, Carol. Um, in her district, they're required to put on the video, which is very questionable because it's kind of a privacy um, issue. So um, you call out for responses. So you're calling their names and asking them to answer. Ah, Breshna, that's a great thing. Ask them questions, yes. Um, I read some statistics somewhere that um, teachers ask something like 200 questions in a class meeting. I never thought of it. Maybe we do, but it could be even, you know, little questions. Make sure everyone answers a question. Polls, direct, not necessarily open-ended questions. Okay, Vicki, I think. Okay, yes. So yeah, some of the thumbs up and down. Pear Deck is great. Hey, Angelica, Angelica. Um, next time you present with me because <laughs> you put some things in there that um, I'm going to talk about. Thank you, everybody. If you still have ideas, you can go ahead and keep chatting there. And so yeah, the average attention span of adults 
I think it has decreased. I read some article, Time Magazine, a few years ago, and they said humans' um, attention spans are shorter than a goldfish attention span. So we need to have students do something, not just listening, like I was doing in my first week of synchronous online. I was the only one talking. I needed to get the students talking. So you can have them do something or you can have them talk. We need to go back to limiting the teacher talk. So how can we do that? Well, there are many things, just like what you saw using the um, reactions, um, having students answer in the chat, um, comprehension questions for check-ins, um, using the whiteboard, asking, you know, when we are in the physical classroom, I imagine sometimes you have students come up to the board, right? Well, you can do that in Zoom by using the whiteboard and the annotation tool. You could have board work. I mean, this would be indispensable for math teachers, I think, and board races. And then someone mentioned, thank you, uh, Angelica, the wheel of names. This one's really fun. So I don't, pref I don't like cold calling myself because of past experience when I was in uh, middle school and I went to the Catholic school and every Friday we had to go to mass and the bishop um, called on me. <laughs> it was not, I was on planet Saturn. <clears throat> so I don't, because of my personal experiences with that, I don't really like cold calling. So instead you could do that think, pair, share. You pose a question, you send students out to the break room to rehearse, to say what they want to say. They come back and you could ask the group. But if they've, if they've practiced with each other and they're pretty sure of their answer, you can type in their names here. I'm gonna put Katrina, Mimi, Diana, and I'll put one more person. Who did I see? I'll just choose someone from the list and um, Elizabeth is here again, so I'll give, I'll pick on Elizabeth one more time. And Elizabeth. Okay, so um, you could do this, you see how fast and easy it is to do, and then you type in their names, the names change, and you click on here. Okay, Elizabeth, tell us what you have for answer number one. So you can see, and it has that, congratulations, Elizabeth. You get to answer, how lucky for you. So you can see, um, if you open that up, students, uh, oh, my, oh my gosh, I might be called on. I better get ready, right? So it, it could be non-threatening, um, that kind of cold calling. Yes, right, okay, so there's that. Okay, I'm gonna open a poll. Here's the poll, there's only one question. Do you use polls in Zoom or other video conferencing, um, like maybe you use uh, Google Meet or something? Okay, if you're saying yes, if you could type in the chat, how do you use polls? How did you use maybe the last poll? Some of you are saying no. So if you do, if you do um, use Zoom and you haven't used polls, I'm gonna send this, uh, I'll share the links to these slides um, right at the end. And um, uh, when you click on this slide on polls, it will show you how to make a poll. It's so easy. You could do it while students are in a breakout room. You could do it on the spot. It's really easy to do, okay? So I'm gonna end the polling right now. Thank you everybody for answering. Yes. So it looks like um, you can see here, half and half almost. So if you do use Zoom, learn how to use the polls. That could be a great way to get anonymous feedback from your students. So very simple way to make sure students are engaged, participating, to check in and make sure they're understanding and so forth, okay? Um, I'm not gonna go over this, but some other interesting features, um, I don't know that they would apply to every teaching scenario, but um, you can now use um, PowerPoint slides as your virtual background. Try it out before you use it with your class because some, sometimes it doesn't work out very well. And if you ever have an image or um, something that you're sharing and you want to be able to zoom in, there is an option to zoom in with uh, Zoom. Zoom in with Zoom. So you can see that link. I'm not going to show you how to do that, but I just wanted to share that with you. 
I hope you do this when you are in the presentation mode of your lessons. Um, that's the part where it's, let's face it, it's teacher talk. We ask questions, but it is primarily teacher talk because we're delivering the new content. Um, do you use um, some sort of note taking guide for students or do you teach them how to take notes? Type yes or no in the chat. Okay, I'm getting yes, yes, no, no. Um, so it may not apply to all of us. If you're teaching, for example, beginning ESL, you know, maybe they're just writing down words, right? But um, for the, those of us, maybe adult high school, ASE programs, um, advanced ESL, they, that's a skill they need to learn. So what I do, um, I'm kind of using right now the flipped classroom model. Um, so that students are learning and listening to me talk outside of class time so that when we're together in our Zoom meetings, that we are maximizing student um, to student and teacher to student interaction. So you you can make a recording with, with Zoom. Um, so you just, you know, apart from your class, you just open up Zoom. Maybe you have some slideshow that you go through and you um, start recording. And um, the really nice thing is it cr creates a transcript as well. So um, Zoom, there are many other tools that you could do that, but I, I highly recommend that you teach students how to take notes and have them take notes because, hello, that's, that's what they need to do in college and careers, right? Okay, so then they become more active uh, learners. Okay, is there anybody who does not know Quizlet? If you can type, anybody who does, I think everybody knows Quizlet. I think everybody knows Quizlet. Okay, good. Because, um, yeah, it is the bomb. It's so awesome. Um, you, you can just search for your topic and you can even import other users' slides into yours. Um, but what I wanna try with you all I loved using Quizlet Live in the classroom. Did you all use Quizlet Live for those games? If you can type yes, if you type, if you use Quizlet Live back where you, when you were in the face-to-face -face classroom. Okay, and it was so fun because yeah, I mean, 90% of adults, um, adult students, according to the OTAN tech surveys, 90% um, have, have, their cell phone, right? And I would get students together and they'd be all around one desk, huddled with their phones lined up. And it was so much fun. They're like, okay, good job, everybody. No, again, again, right? So it became so fun. And then the math teacher complained <laughs> because we were being too noisy. But um, it's a little bit harder to do that, that game competition in a Zoom meeting. It's hard because, you know, if one student doesn't get how to do it, he can't communicate with the other person on the team. So what Quizlet has now is um, Quizlet Live, but with individual mode. We're gonna play it, is that okay? We're gonna try it. So you, I think it's really important to see what students see before you try it yourself with your students. So let me open this up. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna start. Now, this is, I want to caution you that sometimes when you're doing these sort of things with your students, it may be complicated for them to navigate between Zoom and uh, another web browser, you know, another tab. So, you know, be prepared for that, you know, um, maybe explain, maybe take screenshots of what they should see as they're going along. Um, so if you, if you would like to play, you're welcome. If you want just to kind of um, see what the teacher sees from my view, that's fine too. So I'm gonna, I just um, chose someone else's list. I didn't figure my vocabulary would be so interesting for you. So we're gonna get started. We're going to go with the individual mode and we're going to go with um, term and definition. I think that one's, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. Let me go back. I want to go with, um, I have to open it up again. I want to go with the, here it comes. Sorry about that. Talking and clicking at the same time is hard. Um, I want to go with the individual mode and I want to go with reading the definition and quickly seeing the options. I think the other one is a harder where they just see um, a term and then they have to read all of these long definitions. So I'm going to choose this one. 
And so if your students do have, if they're working on a computer and have a phone, you know, um, they're, they're doing better than most Californians if they have both, um, but you could have them, you know, just scan this QR code with your phone to participate. So what you all are going to do is you're going to go, I'm going to put this in the chat, this link, and you can click it in the chat, www.quizlet.live. And when you get there, it's going to ask for a code. You see this code 957878. And you start to see when students are coming in, just like you would with the um, with the former Quizlet Live. Okay. So I student see students are coming in. While you're doing that, I'm I recommend turning the music off. <laughs> That's in the options because Oh my goodness, it's so loud. When you go to start the game, your students will have their eardrums rattled. Okay, so it's www. You know, sometimes it takes a while. Students are typing in quizlet.com, okay? And some of you, I see your, with your name, I see your image. That means you have an account with Quizlet, okay? So um, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds, 10, nine, Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, I'm gonna create the game, here we go. So you click create the game and what it does for each individual, it gives them what you used to see, right? A team name, that's the name of an, um, an animal, yeah. Okay, thank you, Jacqueline. I'll, I'll see if I can come to that in just a bit. That's a great question. Um, sometimes students are like, oh no, I just closed it. Okay, well, you can add more players on the fly right here, add more players. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the game. Um, oh, Elaine and Debbie, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna see if I can add you still. Okay, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and create the game and I'm gonna go ahead and start the game. Sorry, I'm gonna have to just start the game anyway. Okay, so you're gonna see the question um, and I get to see the leaderboard. So this, I just chose ed tech terms. These are probably so easy for you, but just so you have some familiar um, vocabulary to work with. And um, I can see that the bears, whoever is a bear is really, oh no, the puffin is amazing. Puffin did her homework, I think, or his homework. But the stingrays are catching up. Watch out, Puffins. Watch out, Puffins. Puffins, gee. Puffin must be a tech coach, a tech trainer. I guess we'll find out if Puffin wins. But Stingray is still, and Bear is, Bear is catching up. Stingray. Bear. Oh, oh, Puffin. That was heartbreaking. <laughs> this is the fun part. <laughs> Stingray, Stingray, is Stingray going to forge ahead? Can Puffin make a comeback? Oh, Diana. <laughs> That's not even fair, Diana. <laughs> So Diana won, foxes and bald eagles. Um, you can see all the statistics, but can you, do you think your students would have fun with that? You can type yes or no in the chat. Um, so what I think, that's okay, Vicki, I'm always last. But for me personally, this is better than Kahoot because Kahoot, you have to choose the, <laughs> the shape. <laughs> and I am such, I'm really bad with hand-eye coordination. So, oh, oh, you were tiger. So a different Diane. There's a different Diane, an imposter. <laughs> I was Diana Batista. Ah, oh, okay. I was Fox. I was number two. So oh, the two well, yeah. good for you, Diana. <laughs> I would expect you to be high up on there. So the two Dianas, thank you. And Bald Eagle, I'm not sure who Bald Eagle was, but you, you did a great job, Bald Eagle. These two have an advantage on you. Um, okay, so I think um, I, I've done this with my students the first time they they're kind of figuring it out 
some people do not even answer one question but then i get to the end and they i want to do it again what yeah they want to do it again because then once they figure out how to do it i have one guy he's always so quiet in class but he always wins anything like this he's just that's his personality a little bit of an introvert he doesn't feel like it so quizlet live individual mode asking about if your students have a phone or a tablet rather than a computer um, I'm going to show you my recommendation for anything new that you want to try out at the end, but, you know, I get my kid and my husband <laughs> and um, I give them the co code and um, I see what it looks like on my phone. So if you are able um, to be presenting your, you know, your, your uh, screen in a Zoom or whatever meeting and have a phone too, then you can also give students who are on a phone directions because things look very different on a phone for almost every type of app. Um, I'm not going to show you this. You can look at it later, but um, we do usually in my classroom. I have if you're an ESL teacher, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I have boxes and boxes of flashcards and manip manipulatives and sentence strips and all of that. So obviously you can't do that, right? So you could use Quizlet flashcards. I, I review vocabulary with my students like that when we're together. Um, you can make a slideshow. I have grammar drills. I'll let you look at this on your own. But um, you know, the visual and the repetition is the way that we learn. So um, even though it may be you know, a little bit dull sometimes, repetition is how we learn. So I have different slides that I repeat throughout an entire eight weeks. And by the end, students memorize the slide <laughs> before I even show it. Okay, I'm not a big fan of worksheets personally, um, although we have to have students do some writing because writing um, is kinesthetic learning. And for some of our students, that's the preferred learning style. But there are some cool um, websites where you can make interactive worksheets. One is called Live Worksheets. It looks like so incredibly easy. You just upload something and it makes it um, kind of like fillable. Um, let me show you this one in just a second. I found a, a grammar one there as well. And I think a lot of you have probably heard of Wiser by now. Um, <clears throat> it's really the most re robust because students can record their voices. There are all kinds of question types. They can write a paragraph. And there's also teacher made, which looks quite simple as well. But um, just to give you some familiarity with a different option, this famous artwork that I have here, um, let me just show you what that looks like. So someone created this, it wasn't me. And um, it's so cool, it's drag and drop. Obviously, um, you know, in my class, I don't teach the works of art, but you know, this could be pictures of vocabulary. Um, and okay, I can I cannot read it and do it at the same time. But then um, it, it looks like, wow, it is kinesthetic. So I, evidently, when you click finish, then you email it, you can check, and then you can email your answers to um, your teacher. Um, personally, I don't want <laughs> to correct people's worksheets, but they could if it's something um, really important that you want to see how they did, okay? So that could take worksheets to a higher level, any of those three. Okay, so I have this lesson, it's one of my, I'm sure you all have this lesson like, oh, I've worked on this. I've done it so many times. It's like my star, five star lesson. And mine is about modals, one of mine. And um, what I had in the classroom is I would have sentences with may, could, would, should, ought to, had better, different sentences. And students had to match up strips of paper from the sentence to what the meaning is for that modal like should you should see a doctor advice or you had better wear your seatbelt um, obligation so they did this matchup and it it was great they would work together they'd be all around a desk getting really animated how do i do that online well there are a couple of websites there are probably many others i'm going to show you two at least um i i want to mention this one it looks like um apps for efl um an English foreign language instructor created it. So um, it really, if you're an ESL teacher, it really has some of our activities in mind. I haven't used it though, honest, to be honest with you. Um, but what I did is I was able to take 
I went, went to my office and found those sentence strips and retyped them because I didn't save it. And I created this matchup that's the best I can do for online. Okay, I can share the link and students can go to a breakout room and work in pairs by one of the students sharing their screen. So I'll just show you. Okay, let's see. Let me move this a little bit. I can speak English, can. So they can be talking, you know, or you could have it be an individual or a whole whole class activity. Um, okay, so can means ability. Where is it? Oh, hey, that was that was too easy. Oh, must not. Ooh, must. Prohibition. Okay, so you do the matchup, you submit your answers. And so far I was doing fine. But what I did is just type in and with that, it will create many different types of activities. This is a quiz. This is a game show quiz. Amaze Chase. So you just enter the information and it makes the activities depending on what kind of activity you want. Now with a free version, um, you can only create five activities. So um, maybe you talk to your school if it's something that looks useful. Um, or what I do is um, I use a different <laughs> email. <laughs> I use my Google email to set up another account. Okay, so that's there are always workarounds. <clears throat> Um, Flippity, there is an article um, in uh, on the OTAN website about how to do it. So I'm not going to demonstrate it, but it's um, linked with uh, a spreadsheet, Google spreadsheets. So you put in your, your information for your activity and you can convert it to all these different types of activities. Bingo, flashcards, quiz show. There's so much there. Okay, um, I, I observed a teacher who did manipulatives um, and it's kind of dragging that that would be like dragging words to put a sentence in order, for example, word search, lots of things there. Um, other manipulatives, do any of you know Matt from Ditch That Textbook? Is anybody on his list? You get his emails. Okay, thank you, Diana. Thanks for, oh my gosh, I need to go back and read all of this in the chat, I'm missing out. Um, so there's a guy, I think he's a high school teacher, I don't know. And he goes crazy with Google things. He has this website that is massive and I got on his list. So every time he's doing a work, uh, like a free workshop and things, or he put some new resources, he has all these templates for Google Slides. And this is one that you see, I don't know how I would use it maybe, but um, you could see this would probably be for math. <laughs> I think, I don't, I don't speak math. Um, Slides Mania, that, it's really funny, this lady who has an office job, she's not even a teacher. She creates all these um, Google and PowerPoint um, slide templates. And she has some that are like this. Look at this one. It's a market, an interactive template for counting money. Wow. So you can get it for free. And then you'll have to tell me. I haven't used it. I just haven't used it yet. But um, she has some great activities there. So check it out if you go to the education tab. And beautiful templates for um, slides as well. Okay. So we all agree our students like Zoom breakout. Um, they, they, I mean, they're like me. I need to talk to someone else besides my family. This has been a year of being stuck in the house with three lovely people, but I wanna talk to someone else and so do they. So um, what I'd like you to do is share in the chat. What is your one best activity you've used in breakout rooms? And what, were there some, was there something you did up front to make sure that it succeeded, or maybe over time you found ways to make it work out better. So please share that in the chat for just a minute. Thank you, Mimi. Yeah, I'm gonna show Jamboard. He has Jamboard templates too, I believe, um, Matt does. Oh yeah, that's how we're doing it too, Linda. So EL Civics, when you have to, when you have a, a co-op that has the one-to-one -one interviewing or role play, you can pull students out, out into the break room and do that one-to-one. -one. 
to show a worksheet while in breakouts. Okay, Francisco, are you talking about those form the live worksheets and Wiser and so forth? Um, I think what you would do, this is, um, we're gonna try this in a minute, is um, you have the link ready when you're in the main room, okay? And you share it in the chat and then you send students to the breakout and nine times out of 10, the chat will follow them. And then one student decides to share who, who has the ability and know how to share their screen and they click on that link and then they're sharing within their group. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you, everybody. So yeah, introductory question, kind of that um, question that sparks the interest in your lesson, you know, before you get started teaching it. Okay. Of course, like everything we do, we have to model. I think you all know that I do, we do, you do, you know, of lesson planning. Um, model what you want them to do. Check for comprehension. I, I observed this excellent teacher and she repeated the instructions for a breakout activity three or four times. When I know she's an excellent teacher and when I mentioned to her, do you ever like um, tell, give students instructions and have them repeat it back to you? And she said, yeah, oh my gosh, I didn't do that. So these little things that we're, we're just, you know, when we're trying to um, deliver our instruction via online, we forget about all these important things that we normally do. Assign roles, I don't always do that, honestly, but that is um, a best practice so that they get started right away. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna be the screen share. What are you going to do? Um, this image that you see here is not mine. I did uh, credit it and it was licensed for sharing, but this was from a TESOL presentation. This, this woman recommended having a timer, a note taker, a screen share and a reporter. I usually make my breakout um, rooms only like three students because sometimes when you have four, then you know it's easier for one of the students to kind of not participate. And as this woman, um, she said it's really good to give frames okay so for the higher levels it will be a different language for the lower levels just that basic um, turn taking and um, going over an activity types of things like what do you have for number one that kind of stuff right okay so I want to show you a couple of things that I do um, when I send students out to breakout rooms if they're just doing like a think pair share then they're accountable when they come back because i'm going to ask their group one of the questions but other times i want them to produce something so that i can help hold them accountable in that way so google docs and slides are my best two friends right now so what i often do is i create um, a google doc or a google slide depending on the activity i share a url and um at times, I, I put different sections or different slides for different groups. I put in their names maybe ahead of time. And um, I share it as can edit. And they're all working on one document. Um, I can show you a quick example here. So this was a while ago. This was one shared document because um, I wanted them to be able to look at each other's, you know, the other group's um, ideas because um, they might, they may have run out of ideas. So I was okay sharing this with everyone, the whole group, but I put in their team members names before. So they knew, and I've kind of put um, a heading with the numbers and they had to brainstorm after we had read and discussed um, cell phones and how they can help or harm society. And they had to brainstorm helped versus harmed. They, they were told to keep up of, to come up with five things. And so um, you can see here, everybody list all oh, this, they didn't think of many bad things. Um, but that was their, their pre-writing kind of, you know, the brainstorming. And then all of the ideas were in one place. In the physical classroom, I usually use those big flip papers and post them up. This is the next best thing, but at least they can see what other people, because what other people have written, because then they have some ideas for their paragraph that they're going to write. Um, I won't show you this one, but um, for um, review of vocabulary or grammar, for example, use a shared um, Google Slides. You can also find from these two folks, um, Slides Mania, the, the woman I talked about, and Hello Teacher Lady, they have um, templates 
for breakout rooms is super fancy. I'm not there yet, but you could check it out. Okay, do you, do you wanna try something? Let me see how much time I have. I have a good time. So let's try this so that you can see what students would see. Now I know some of you already know this, so you're gonna kind of facilitate, you're gonna help your group, okay? I'm gonna put you into breakout rooms. I'm gonna briefly, like in 10 seconds, say, hi, where do you teach? Oh, okay. So um, introduce yourself, tell where and what you teach very briefly. Whoever is on um, a desktop or laptop, that would probably be the best to be the sh screen sharer. So if you have some expertise or experience in your, of, among your group members, can you please share your screen? Okay. Um, if you are lost and you don't know how, what to do when you get to your room, there is a help button. Um, what you're going to do, I'm gonna put um, a link in the chat. I hope this is the right one. I'm gonna put a link in the chat. And that's not it, darn, I erased it. I'm gonna have to just um, get that link ready because I accidentally um, accidentally copied the wrong one. So um, when you get there, I'm gonna put the link in the chat momentarily. You're gonna work together on one document, okay? And, okay. So this is, these are the steps that you come, can come back to later. Um, but let me open this link. And what you're going to see when you open this link is this thing copy, because I want each group to have their own copy. You're not going to be working um, all on one document. Okay. So I'm going to share that in the chat right now. So it'd be good if you don't put anything in the chat for a second. Um, WordWall is free, Elaine. Um, but after five, then you have to pay if you want more than five activities. Yeah. Okay, I put the link in the chat. I'm going to put you in breakout rooms. Someone's going to be the screen share. Okay. Um, when you see that document, the screen share, after you click the link, you need to click make a copy. Okay. And then um, you're going to see some questions. I'm not going to preview it just to save time, but you'll see some questions. There's a table that you and your team members need to fill out. The screen share, you're going to type the answers for your team, and you're going to insert a picture. And when you're all done, you're going to email it to me. I'm going to give you like seven minutes because I have a lot more still that I want to show you, but I want you to be able to experience this. So let me get the breakout rooms ready. Um, as I said, I normally put um, three people in a room. I'm going to do four just, just in case there's, you know, not everyone's on a computer that makes sure that you have better chances of having someone be the screen share. Okay. So I'm going to um, create the rooms now. You're going to click the join, go to your room, decide, decide who your um, screen share is. Screen share, click the link. See, I'm, I'm not having you repeat back to me the instructions. I'm modeling badly, but um, just to go quickly. Okay. If you have any questions, click the help button. Here we go. Okay, so thanks everybody. Um, if you want, would like to share in the chat how that went for you. Um, so you can see here, um, one team finished. They emailed it to me and I could go to my email and there's their image. Oh, isn't that precious? So um, this is something you could have your students do. It makes them um, accountable when they're in the breakout rooms. Yeah, it's very useful. So thank you. Um, what I'd like to share is how, I, how you do that so that everybody is working on the same sort of document. It looks the same, but they have their, each team or each individual has their own. What you do in that case with Google Slides or Google Docs is you do what's called a force copy. So you go ahead and you click on the share and make sure it says can edit. Then what I do is I paste the URL like into notes or into a Word document. And you, you take out the part that says edit, everything after that last forward slash, and then what you copy, what you type in at the end is the word copy like that. And then just like what you saw, hopefully, is when they go to your link, they are forced to make a copy. It's kind of like a template, right? So um, lots of things you could do with Google Slides and Google um, Docs where students are in their breakout rooms working together on one thing that everybody's looking at. Um, I hope, I think everyone here probably is familiar with Padlet. If there's anyone who is not familiar with Padlet, can you type no in the chat? If you're not familiar. Yeah, we, we all know Padlet. 
it's okay. No, not all of us. It's one of my favorite tools to use. So you can use it for having students introduce themselves, for brainstorming, for four corners, for uh, exit tickets, so many things. And I have about 15 minutes left. So I'm going to go a little bit fast, but remember, you can come back to these slides anytime. So you, as a teacher, you create an account. It's totally free. I can't remember the number of walls. I made my account like 10 years ago, so I, I was grandfathered in and I have something like 40 different walls, but you can always delete one and make a new one, you know, so three active ones, Christy. What's that? Three. Three only. Three only. Bummer, yeah, that's, that's not enough. Well, you can always um, archive them. Yeah, you can archive, you you use it once you delete it, or you can create a Padlet activity, and then um, you can just e delete what students responded and use it again, right? You but, can um, also earn more Padlets through referrals. So if you oh. get your students to sign up for an account with your <laughs> referral, then you earn, for every three students that sign up, you get a new Padlet. Okay, so I refer all of you. <laughs> <laughs> right. So thank you. Yeah, I didn't know that. So that's good. Yeah. But if you're creating the wall, then students don't necessarily need to sign up. But if you wanted them to create their their padlet walls that they share, or maybe they create one padlet wall and they put a whole bunch of different things on that wall. And that's kind of like their their visual aid for a presentation, for example. Um, so this is an example as I was going to say on the previous slide, they have different types of walls than they had a few years ago. So for example, this one in the left corner, the group work are pro, pro and con. Um, it looks like this. So what I did, we were um, reading in class about fast food, how it's so bad for you. And um, I wanted them to write a paragraph about whether fast food should have warning labels like cigarettes and alcohol and everything else is bad for you. And so I wanted, um, the different groups to be working together, but have all the groups in one place. So um, this was something I just created this. I shared it in the, oh, thank you, Jamie. I just got your document. I shared it, uh, the link in the chat and they went into their breakout room. Someone shared their screen and opened the link. And so you can see group one, I asked them to think of uh, both sides, reasons why yes, reasons why no, here's the second group and so on. So then they, everybody, again, it's a different way that everybody can see what everyone else was thinking for the pre-writing. I wanted to have you do something with Padlet, but I don't think I'll have time, but I will share um, the link and um, maybe you can go and post later. Um, do you know the activity Four Corners? Can you type yes or no in the chat? Four Corners? Okay, this is a great activity for discussion, either be pre-reading, post-reading, um, just even an icebreaker. So um, I have a lesson um, that I have students um, read about introverts and extroverts, and they watch that TED Talk, the famous Susan Cain TED Talk, and then they do the online assessment to find out if they're introvert, extrovert, or ambivert. And then we talk about vocabulary and different traits related to introverts and extroverts. And so before um, we even get in too far into the lesson, making sure they understand the vocabulary, I created this shelf again the shelf of palette. I put the words. So this was something I used to do in my classroom. The, the four walls, there would be these posters with these words. But instead of having, um, they can't move around very much when we're online. So instead, I share the link and they go and post under the words that describe them and give examples. Um, now, how this is how I did this in the past. But how I would do it now is, um, with the newest version of Zoom, you can let students self-select their rooms. So that would be a great way to do this as well. You, you create the rooms based on um, these descriptions, these words, then they self-select and they go to that room and you tell them, okay, I want you to talk about this in your breakout room. I, that's how I would do it now. Okay, I have so many more slides, but um, I'm just gonna skip this one. Um, I'm going to put this in the chat really quick. If you would like to go and try it out, um, please do. Um, it's a similar activity to the one you just saw, but what it is is that um, you're going to t write about which, um, which type of teacher you are and give an example, okay? So, 
Oh, thank you, Jamie. Okay. So um, <clears throat> let me get back to where I was. Christy, quick question. Have you shared the slides for this presentation yet, or will you do so at the end? Never fear, Diana. I'm going to do that at the end. <laughs> We've just it's been a little, having a lot of chat about it. So it's I a little I'd... trick of the trade, right? Yep. People I thought you would leave early. The they you. don't get the prize. Um, a couple of you mentioned Jam Jamboard. Oh, this is like Padlet. It's like Google Docs and slides. It's like so robust. There are so many things you can do. Um, and that, that gentleman, Matt, from Ditch That Te Textbook, he has lots of templates. But I just created this one with four pictures um, from my conversation class. We were talking about nature. And then um, I shared this. And um, over here, they just peel a little, they put a little post-it to the um, different image that they like. So they just drag and drop and then they type. Um, you can have multiple pages. I don't know if you can see right here. You could have multiple pages. So they could go to another page and um, you know, post about another question. They can draw or write. They can add images. They can highlight. They can, they can do lots of things. It's pretty robust. Um, on the slides, I have a how-to. And I think this is um, a list of templates as well. OK, let me check my time. I have 10 minutes or less. Um, you know, in ESLs, particularly, we do a lot with dialogues. Um, it gets boring at the higher level when you're doing dialogues. So instead, I have students write a dialogue where they're talking to a famous person that they choose and what questions they write. In this case, it was about um, they were using embedded questions. These are quite advanced students. And this student, she uh, made this slideshow. She put in a picture of herself and Leonardo DiCaprio, and she asked him questions. And then um, she also had to use the internet to search for the answers to the questions she asked him, like how old he he is and so forth. Another fun way to spice up um, dialogues, again, having students write their dialogues, um, make beliefs comics. This, this man is incredible. He has so many printables. He has lesson plans. He has so much there. And so what you could do is pair up students based on who is good with tech and who is good with writing. And they could go to a breakout room and create um, a, a comic strip of an uh, of a dialogue that they've written together. Maybe you have students um, prepare dialogues related to your civics unit or something. Here's that lady, Slides Mania again. Um, she has lots of choice boards. I believe there was at least one, maybe there were two um, sessions the last couple of days about choice boards. And that plays to um, student choice. And what I mean by that is um, that students have different options for how they they complete assignments, for example. So this woman, she has um, this board game. Okay, to be honest, I haven't tried it. But a board game, you can play a board game in a Zoom class meeting? Wow. There are dice that you roll, virtual dice. And there are, of course, the flippity board games. I love Jeopardy Labs. I have tons of PowerPoints of Jeopardy. But Jeopardy Labs helps me because I'm bad at math. <laughs> so um, you can go and find a game. You can create a game by making an account. I'm just going to go here and show you what it looks like. Is everybody familiar with this one? No. OK, so you know that we, in our on ground face to face classrooms, we do games. It's fun. And we need to keep doing that fun stuff online. So our students are still interested in coming to our classes. So you can look for. I would pre preview all the questions before using it with the students, but you can look for um, Jeopardy games that have already been created. You can choose your number of teams, okay? And um, you can even edit those that are there. Probably you'll be prompted to, uh, to make an account. You can print it out. Not that I would probably do that. You can embed it. You could put it in your Canvas course. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Start so you can see how this works. At the bottom is the place where I can keep score. Thank goodness, because I cannot, I cannot speak and do math. No way, not at the same time. So this is vegetables, flowers, true or false. So team one, true or false. An artichoke is a as a flower. You can type in the chat. What do you think? And then I press the space bar. True. So then I go down here and I can give team one points. Um, so this could be fun. You could, um, you could even have students look for a game and you could tell them that the, that could be their homework. 
over the weekend is they could play a game with their family. Okay, we all know about Kahoot. Now you've seen how you could do Quizlet Live. The other one that I really like is Quizzes. You can go there and search for all kinds of games. I wanted to have you play a game so that you could experience it, but we don't have time. But again, I put the caution there because um, some of our students are only on phones or very new to technology, and they may get frustrated if they cannot go from your Zoom room to get into the game. So be prepared for that. Other things, I don't have time to look at all of these. Scategories is a fun game. This is um, a link that shows you how you can play that in a Zoom meeting. Virtual bingo. Um, there's a random team generator. There's even online dice and a coin flip. Okay. And I want to share this one because my students make a lot of presentations. And usually at the end, I'm the only one, yay, like that. And everybody else is silent. I don't know why they just don't clap. So now I do this one. I have this open when my Zoom class meeting is open. Let's hope it um, loads really fast. Okay, you go here to this soundboard and make sure I'm sharing my audio. Can you hear that? Or um, someone in my class, they said the other day, I asked a question and no one answered. And um, so someone said, put on the crickets. They knew that crickets mean hello, anyone. Um, so that's a fun addition. And Flipgrid, if you haven't used that, that is a great way to create and maintain your community. That's a, the main way over the past summer when I was teaching my class, the main way I got to know my students a little bit better by having them answer weekly questions on Flipgrid. Okay, I have no more time, I think. But what I wanted to say is feedback. We need to ask students how it's going for them. Because when we ask feedback, then we can deliver on the feedback they give us. So I have a Google form I use after week one or two. Simple questions like, how's the class going? Too fast, too slow, just right? How's the workload? What do you like? What don't you like? What do you want me to do going forward? And then so they fill that out in the following Monday when I see them, I thank them for that feedback. And I said, you said you wanted more pronunciation, so we're gonna do some right now. And when students get what they need from us, that's when they keep coming to our classes. And I think um, we have to work super hard right now to maintain our enrollments this is a real um, serious issue of job security for us. I also use Padlet at the midterm to get some feedback and that way they can see what other students are saying about the class as well. And at the end of the term, I use an ungraded um, survey um, for anonymous end of term feedback. So I know what to do next time and not what to do. So I've come to the end of my time. I'm gonna share that link for these slides in the chat, just a minute. Um, so I often, um, think to myself, what else can I do? This is what I highly recommend is find a buddy, someone at your school. If you have your family that works sometimes, but sometimes my family just gets sick of helping me with my teaching. So I have these, these three buddies. We, we have each other on chat. And so we might say, can you look at this or can you meet me on Zoom really fast? I wanna see what this looks like from the student perspective. Um, I think that will help us a lot. You know, this is a great time to um, work on our networks. Final, final steps. St uh, teachers always ask me, do you use all of that? I don't use all of that all the time. No, I, I have certain tools that I like for certain activities and I teach my class differently every time almost. But once you create some of those activities, you can use them again and again. So take baby steps. Start with what students already know. Try one new thing. I tried the annotation for the first time in the summer with my class. And I said, this might fail. Is that OK? I'm going to try it. And they're like, yeah, teacher. So we did it, and it failed. It failed miserably. And uh, we were all laughing because it was so bad. And it made us kind of closer because they saw I'm a human. I make mistakes. So I tell students all the time, mistakes are how, how we learn. I'm going to make mistakes. You are too. It's no big deal. That's how we learn. And then model the growth mindset. So um, model to students, oh, that didn't work. I give up. I'm never doing that again. Let me try that over the weekend. I'm going to, let's try it again next week. I'm going to try to fix it, right? 